not a problem for Swedish-born supermodel Marcus Schinkenberg. At six foot two with shoulder-length locks and an Adonis-like physique, Marcus set the standard for masculine beauty. He also sent Calvin Klein jean sales skyrocketing with his steamy ads in the early 90s. Seven years and several haircuts later, he remains at the forefront of his profession. In an industry dominated by women, Marcus has emerged as the first male supermodel. My name is Marcus Schenkenberg. I'm 28 years old. I grew up in Sweden and went to the States when I was 18 with one of my best friends. And we um, traveled around the States and um, ended up in Los Angeles. Once settled in Los Angeles, Marcus toiled at odd jobs, taking care of children and walking dogs. But it didn't take long for him to go from au pair to heir apparent. In the weekends, I was roller skating on Venice Beach, California. Met a photographer, Barry King there, who uh, uh, did some test shootings with and um, went to Elite in Los Angeles with the pictures. And they took me on, sent me back to Europe to start modeling and get experience and build up a book. Today, the pages of that portfolio document a distinguished career, from covers of Womo Bazaar to Richard Avedon's photographs for Versace. But still, there is one image that neither Marcus nor the masses can escape. I would say my big break was through the Calvin Klein campaign with Bruce Weber. Actually, she raised me to be sex symbol. Not. Can you say that again? No, 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 it was a joke. I said my mother raised me to be sex symbol. While there's no questioning Marcus Schinkenberg's sex appeal, he has his agent and friend Jason Kanner to thank for his longevity in the modeling world. It's hard to just put it in a phrase, but I mean, Marcus Kane started modeling at a time where there was, it was like there was no male model star, and he kind of worked well with his, you know, the girl versions of him, which were Claudia and Cindy, like go to the icons of that time. And here was this guy that kind of was the only guy that ever seemed to be able to work well with them because those girls are so like amazing that any guy that worked with them before just were like chewed up and spit out. And he's nice as hell. And he, I mean, he's one of the few models that have had a career that lasted more than two minutes. Though now at the top of the modeling world, Marcus had other plans growing up. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, and uh, you know, I always wanted to be a like professional basketball NBA basketball player. I was completely Mr. Average, and then when I started working out, things, you know, it got, became more and more, uh, I would say, as I grew older, I, I became more popular with the girls. Today, there's one girl who Marcus is particularly popular with, supermodel Rosemary Wetzel. In the next 30 minutes, Marcus shares his amazing world, from the sweltering heat of a Miami photo shoot. That's nice, just like that. Lovely, hold that. Good. to a revealing moment in Times Square. <laughs> at work, at play, in Paris. Rock and roll. It's an intimate glimpse into the life of a male supermodel. My mother always told me to, um, she always told me to be, to, to be, uh, myself and you know do whatever I wanted to do uh, you know if I'm happy she's happy very nice these days Marcus Schinkenberg has every reason to be happy constantly in demand around the world it's not unusual for him to be in four countries in less than a week I like um, traveling seeing the world uh, meeting uh, you know, interesting people. And I came in from Paris just now, and uh, I'm going to New York this evening, and tomorrow to Phoenix, and then to LA. And you know, it's it's really uh, um, the traveling is also very very difficult. You know, you're constantly jet lagged, and uh, and uh, you know that's the hardest part too. Today, Marcus is in Miami Beach, Florida preparing for a shoot with photographer Daniela Federici for the cover of the first ever Boss Models calendar. On this photo shoot, Marcus doesn't need to worry about fitting into a significant amount of clothing. All he needs is the sex appeal that's launched his career to the top. I consider myself a pretty normal guy. It's just, you know, when you do pictures, you work with a great photographer and, you know, I think you can make something together that looks 
sexy or whatever, you know, it's, uh, but it's, you know, I can't, can't say myself that I'm sexy. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. The prime purpose of the photo shoot is apparent. Make Marcus magnificent. That's nice, just like that. Lovely, hold that. Chin down a little. Right. Have you ever taken a bad photo in your life? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Marcus is more than just a mannequin. He involves himself in the entire process. Great. <sighs> Wanna have a look, love? <coughs> so you can see your shapes. This is quite nice when you're full with the arms down too. Yeah. This is really nice. It's really nice, yeah. And I quite like that one with maybe one down, one up. Yeah. This is... Too much. This is beautiful, though. Marcus is sweet, and he was so quick, and so, you know, he was waiting for the light, and he had to hold positions. He's very professional, and that usually comes with the models that have been around longer and that are successful. You know, he's been flew in today to do this. He flew out tonight to do something else, so he was great. And... Okay. Let's go downstairs, I think. Do you want to color here? No, because we've got a we've got what a time limit. I want to do two more shots downstairs, and it's six, so we've got heaps up here. Let's go downstairs. Go downstairs. Yeah, thanks, love. Cool, that's nice. Great, hold that. Lovely, that's the shot. You know, when I see myself in the mirror every day, from day to day, it's you know, probably like everybody else sees themselves in the mirror. Lovely. The job of photographer and model is almost complete. Once again, Marcus has lived up to the sexy image. You know, when I look back as a kid, you know, I was just one of the guys in school and, and uh, could never have imagined what, all this sex symbol and all this stuff. Good done. Thanks, love. <laughs> Coming up on Model, pandemonium breaks loose as Marcus strips down in the middle of Manhattan. But first, see what happens when he meets up with his supermodel girlfriend in one of New York City's hottest nightclubs. Everyone's ignoring me. <laughs> From Miami to New York, supermodel Marcus Schenkenberg is constantly on the move. When at home in New York City, Marcus reunites with his girlfriend, supermodel Rosemary Wetzel. I met my girlfriend in Paris uh, about a um, little bit over a year ago, almost a year and a half. Um, we did a fashion show together, and uh, I heard her speaking Dutch, and my parents are from Holland, so, uh, you know, I, I went up to her and, and spoke to her in Dutch. I saw him actually at the show, and it, I looked like this through the mirror. I saw him in the back, and I thought, yeah. <laughs> I thought you looked too much macho and too much man and too much arrogance. But when I started to talk to him, and um, I saw his eyes, and they were very sweet and very, very nice. She was really nice, and, you know, uh, we kept in touch, and one thing led to another, and, you know, then a few months later, we started going out. But with their hectic schedules, trying to find time to actually see each other is next to impossible. Yeah, it's very hard, because uh, the fact that you, you travel so much, I mean, it's not only me traveling all the time, she travels too, so it's, it takes a lot of planning if you want to spend some time together. I think if you believe in it, and I think if you think it's worth it, you will try and you keep on holding on and you just make the best out of it in those few days you see each other. But we seem to manage pretty well. We have these limits and after that limits we have to see each other. Eager to unwind, Marcus and Rosemary pick their favorite hot spot, the exclusive Soho Club Jet Lounge. This is all our, uh, our thing. Let's sit down. It's good morning. We go out, we, and we see our friends and everything, and we have fun. This is Cam and Brampton. Hey, hey, hey. Here's a glass of ice. Thank you, Paul. Normally, I just hang out with my friends and, uh, and you know, have a few cocktails. The friends joining Marcus include fellow supermodel Joel West and one of his closest buddies, his agent, Jason Cannon. Heroin. 
you said you wanted some heroin. One minute, he's enjoying a joke over his fast lane image. The next, he's pensive, awkward. I like saying I'm on myself like a loser. No, come on. We love you. Oh, my God. Joe West is over there. Oh, my God. Look, look, look. Tired of the abuse, Marcus moves to the dance floor. There he is. Eager to lose the camera crew and begin his evening for real, Marcus politely stages an elaborate exit. I'll be right back. We're just gonna do it for the camera. I'll be right back. All right, who's up for pizza? Pizza? Yes. Yes. With anchovies. <laughs> No way. Uh, now, it's cheese? Pizza margarita. It's kept uh, taxi. Yeah, taxi. Uh, where's Sorry. the limo? Where's, <laughs> where's limo? the limo? Where's the Bentley Turbo? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Coming up on Model, a backstage peek at a Paris fashion show. But first, Marcus bears his soul and more for a charitable cause. After a night of clubbing, Marcus Schenkenberg, the world's most in-demand and least inhibited male model, reports to work. But this assignment is like no other. We should just stand there naked and do the picture until we get arrested. That'd be fun, actually. Go to jail. Famous for disrobing in the name of Calvin Klein and Versace, Marcus now puts his anatomical assets to work for PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Now, Marcus, bring your pin down just a touch. I'm like, man, take no, take no. <laughs> With a provocative ad bearing the slogan, Turn Your Back on Fur, Marcus and his cohorts brought activism to the fashion industry. Now, the Maverick models prepare to take their campaign to the streets. First of all, this, this shoot that we already made, we're just recreating the picture you know, so um, at Times Square for for all the. Hey, Joel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Joel West. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Despite the cold, the boss beauties are soon stripped and ready. Marcus, knowing a good photo opportunity, breaks out one of his favorite toys, but play soon gives way to business. This charity event is tightly scripted. There's a couple of key things that I want you to know. A, other than E, you don't talk to anyone unless I pull you aside until we get to the Paramount Hotel. E is the only crew that has an exclusive on this thing. Number two, pair up, do whatever you want, but attempt to make eye contact at least once with every camera, because if, if, if they get a good shot, they'll put it on the front page or they'll put it in the section. If they don't get a good shot, then they'll, they'll chunk it and trash it. In terms of sound bites, and you've got the question and answer sheets, the most effective things to say are things that are really from the heart and things that are really simple. Things like, um, there's no bigger turnoff than someone in fur. Uh, I'm here because I love animals. Just really basic, basic, uh, basic things. Heading to Times Square, Marcus is certain a mob awaits. But by now, all the attention is merely amusing. I get a lot of fan mail. Uh, girls that send their bras and panties. And one girl even asked me to... Uh, read into a jar and, and close it and send it back to her. So uh, get some, uh, get some crazy, um, crazy stuff. Did you do it? I actually fought it into it and uh, sent it back to her. <laughs> As predicted, the crowd is eager for action. For the animals, you know, because uh, they have no voice, so we, we try to speak for them. As instructor, Marcus is soon working the media. Well, we're here to, uh, you know, turn our back on first. To, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get uh, all the uh, malls and all the mall agencies to uh, 
you know, uh, not work with fur. The juggernaut continues at a posh party. Where the supermodel finds time for fun. But the press demands still more interviews, as well as photo ops. Finally, the long day, a smashing success by all accounts, is done. Coming up on Model, Marcus jets to Paris to create a new kind of cowboy cool. After his nearly naked appearance in Times Square, economic student turned supermodel Marcus Schinkenberg faces the tribulations of a splashy Paris fashion show. The one? But ultimately, he walks tall. Like I said, it's a different space every show. Uh, earlier today I did a show in the opera. Very beautiful space. This is more, uh, very different than the opera, as we can see. Not a lot of room here. Unfortunately, Marcus slips in just an hour before showtime. He must be fitted and rehearsed immediately. So normally I do that the day before at least, but it uh, wasn't possible this time. So I'm going to fit my clothes. And then sometimes we do a dress rehearsal. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to do that, but um, and then I do hair and makeup. And I'm ready for the show. But first, Marcus must overcome an array of problems. I'm not used to these high heels. Well, uh, we're very a little bit off, and it's a tiny little flip. They're quite comfortable, actually. I think I can manage. Okay. <laughs> and then another challenge. All right, I'm going to try the wrong way. The runway, however, is made of Wild West-style planks. Not the best surface for heels. But there's no time to argue as Marcus receives his instructions. Maybe some, sometime you can, you, can, uh, you can go directly down. Yeah. And before you leave, you go, sometimes you can go directly here. Okay. If you saw somebody, if one voice is there, you can go down. It's not too much. Okay. No, it's a very untypical runway. It's, uh, it's, and especially with these shoes, it's uh, a little bit difficult, but I think I can manage. With rehearsals finished, the grooming begins. This also brings surprises. This is the first show ever I have nail polish, actually. Yeah. <laughs> As experts tend to his every need, Marcus shares his humble beginnings. In Sweden, I was working at an amusement park in the summers. And uh, they, made, they arranged a fashion show when I was like 16 or something. And, uh, and they asked me if I wanted to do it, so I said yeah. And uh, I was very nervous about it. And, uh, you know, was, all my friends were there. And Twelve years later, all eyes are still on Marcus. And the world's preeminent male model, the consummate pro, does not disappoint. 
From the heat of Miami to the cool clubs of New York City to the glamour of Paris, one face, one body, one name stands apart. Marcus.